Hey YouTube, it's me. In this video I want to show you how you can transfer KNX to Home Assistant relatively quickly. I think I have figured out a way to do this with the least amount of work. I do this voiceover in English, however the interface I use is mostly in German. I hope you can still make use of it in your language. Sorry about that. So let's start in DTS app. Here you just export your group addresses and you choose this option you can see here. You use a CSV file and um, yeah, that's about it with what we need to do. It's not necessary, but I think it's even easier when you do it like this. Then you head over to Excel and you import the file you just generated. Importing these kind of files um, you, you have to use this separator as you have exported it. So in this case, it's comma. And then Excel will make, make it an XLS file. So now we've got always your name and your uh, group address neatly put in Excel. If you've got like special characters like I have here, you can replace them relatively quickly. Um, I'm not so sure about what's smarter to use the real special character or if you rather use a replacement for the special character. Usually home assistants can actually deal pretty well with special characters. The next step is to bring this all into this form. This is a Excel template that you can download. I have to put the link in the description. And uh, here you have to just everything you have to put into this kind of uh, scheme. You see there are some special characters like these pluses and the percentage signs. This is all on purpose. Just leave that be as it is. All you have to exchange are the addresses and the names of the stuff. If you've got sensors, you have to put the type, You, for example, person, or temperature and which types there are available you can find out on the KNX Home Assistant integration page if you uh, head over to sensors and then you can find all the different things that can be defined for a sensor and you also find the types and those types they are of course uh, based on the KNX data types that you probably already know if you know about KNX and has have access to ETS you just use the same um, words that are put behind the data type within the Excel file. And so Home Assistant will know what kind of data it is dealing with. Once you finished your work, it could look something like this. This is a file for a, a one family house, which I will now use for this tutorial. Once you're finished, you export this file as a text file from the export function of Excel. And make sure that it's tab stop separated, like in my example here. For the next stop, I would recommend you download Atom, which is a code editor that's free, um, or any other text editor will probably also work, but this one you can just replicate what I did. So once you've opened the text file in Atom, you can see that this looks um, a little bit messy maybe, but now you can see why these um, special characters come in. We are now going to replace those special characters systematically to get this file into the form we need it to be for Home Assistant. I select the space there, but that's not a real space character. That's why we need to replace it with a real space character, which I do right now. And that's very important. Also turn on the regex function before this. I don't know why, but this is the only way it works. Then replace all. That was the first step. Turn off the regex. Then go back in and replace the quote characters first with one single quote. Okay, you see it's getting uh, more clean now. Next step, we're going to replace the percentage signs and we're gonna replace the percentage sign with a backslash and an N and three spaces. And now we turn on the regex function and this will bring us a line break. Last step is to replace the plus sign with two spaces 
That's all important so that the indentation is correct for the resulting YAML file because this is going to be a YAML file and that's very specific about spaces and indentation and everything. This is why you really have to follow this exactly to the letter, otherwise it will not work. Then you have, of course, to install Home Assistant. I recommend the Raspberry Pi if you can get one. The Raspberry Pi Imager actually has Home Assistant Home Assistant right in there, so you can install it just by choosing the OS, writing it to an SD card, putting it in a Raspberry Pi, starting it up. That's not part of the tutorial, but it's really simple. I just want to go here through it real quick, um, but really there are tons of tutorials about how to set up Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi or any other device. You then access Home Assistant and you just go through the setup. It's very easy, very user-friendly, and you, you certainly not have any problems with that. Once um, you're gone through, it will actually de detect devices in your network. You don't have to add them right now. You can just add them later. Now we're in the Home Assistant interface. Next step is now to install the file editor. This is the way we are going to edit the files and um, that's an important one so please do that start with boot watchdog you can decide yourself what's the right option for you in my case i will enable them all so that's the file editor now okay the first thing we do is we open the configuration yaml that's like the base configuration of home assistant and we're going to add a couple of lines here the HomeKit line and also the last bit we are adding here, you only need to add if you're going to use HomeKit from Apple. The last bit is also a little trick to make the HomeKit enrollment a little bit easier. We're going to see later what we use that for. Next, we create a couple of new files. We can do this right from the file editor. The first one we do is scripts.yaml. This we only need for the HomeKit trick that I mentioned before. If you're not going to use uh, HomeKit and Apple devices, you don't need to do this one. So I assume you're new to Home Assistant, so let, I will show you what you usually do after you've done something like this. You go to Developer Tools and you check your configuration. And in this case, it's going to throw us an error. And that's normal because we don't have a KNX YAML file yet but we have defined it in the configuration. That's really handy. This was right now tested for us. So let's go and solve this. We go back to the file editor and we add the KNX YAML file, which we are going to use for our KNX configuration. Let's also add the HomeKit YAML file. Again, if you don't use Apple devices, you don't need to do this. All right, so let's check the configuration again. It's working and restart Home Assistant. After the restart, you go to Integrations and you add the KNX integration. Of course, for this to work, you have to have a KNX IP interface in your network. Um, in most cases, I've experienced automatic works just fine. And if not, you have uh, maybe a tunneling interface or a routing interface, and then you will have to add your IP address accordingly until it works. Uh, I don't want to go into this uh, on detail right now here, because I think that's a very technical issue if it is one at all. After we've done that, we go back to the file editor and open the KNX YAML file. Then go back to Atom and copy the whole configuration that we have created earlier. And then paste this into the KNX YAML file in the file editor on Home Assistant. Thanks to the genius of the Home Assistant programmers, you can see on the top right this little red exclamation mark and this is telling us that something is wrong with the file. Click on it and you will quickly see what's the problem. Here it tells me there is something wrong on line 239, so let's check this out. Okay, that's the comment I put there on line 239, and that's in quotes, and uh, because it's in quotes, the hashtag there doesn't make it a comment, so 
the quotes have to be deleted. By the way, that's an important command. If you use the same address for operation mode state and set, then you have to put the read flag in the ETS for, for that address so that Home Assistant can read the current state from it. Okay, check the file one more time. And there is another problem on line 668. So let's check this out. Okay, so that's a bad indentation. You can see that the type date and the address, that's not on the same uh, distance from the, from the left side. So we have to fix this and then it will be okay. All right, let's save this and then head over to the integrations and we can reload the KNX integration. And if you got no errors, we can go to entities and we can see all the, the entities that we've just added through this file. So at this point, you're actually done with the KNX integration. However, this video is going to be a little bit longer because now I will order the stuff a little bit and also start creating a simple GUI. If you're new to Home Assistant, this might help you to get started. And a little later, I will also show you how to integrate the Apple HomeKit really quickly. I will not explain every step from now on, but just comment in a couple of places. It's not strictly important to put the stuff in areas, but especially for automatically generated GUIs, this is helpful. The cool thing about Home Assistant is that there are actually already symbols in it. That's the icon you pick and that's also the icon that will be visible in the GUI. Next I'm going to create a new dashboard. A dashboard can also be assigned to a specific user. So for example, if you have got children and you don't want them to have access to all the dashboards or you've got guests or something similar and you don't want them to have access to all the dashboards, then you can actually set this here. So you can add a new user and then you can assign him a role. And on the other hand, you can have a dashboard and then you can not allow this person to use that dashboard. A new dashboard will always be filled with all the devices that you have already added and you can just take control of this and then it's going to be empty. So I'm going to show you now the very simplest way to do this. Usually I arrange stuff in a grid. I think that's a little more compact and um, it's really customizable and I think it's a very good function to show first. And always think that um, in Home Assistant, you got entities. Entities is, for example, a light or a switch or a sensor. So I'm just adding a couple of entities here to show you how this works. Things like the grid or the button that I'm using here is called cards in Home Assistant. And there are many, many cards like graph cards or button cards or lock cards. You also can install additional ones, but there are already plenty of them inside of Home Assistant when you set it up, set it up the first time. For a grid, you set the number of columns you want it to have and it will automatically create a new line whenever one line is full. Also, you can, of course, add different entities and you can add any card in there, not just buttons. You can also add graphs or whatever you like to put in a grid. It's just a way to organize it a little bit more compact. But for GUI stuff, really, there are super good tutorials on YouTube. All right, the last thing is the home kit integration. For that, we have um, created this script, which I run now. And this script is gonna save all entities in a file. And this list of entities is what we are gonna use to create the home kit YAML file real quick. When you do not do this, then HomeKit will be the other way around. That means that all entities will be added except the one you exclude. And we are going to use this list to only include the, uh, the entities we want to in HomeKit without having to go through them one by one 
in the GUI. That's really the much quicker way to do it like this. So we've got this list now and uh, I put it back to Atom and now we're going to fix this list so that it is um, compatible with the YAML that we are going to need. For that I just put a couple of tabs there. That's for the indentation again. And uh, we have the problem with this um, dash. That dash needs a space afterwards. We're going to replace the dash with a dash and a space. And then we've got actually already almost our file ready. In the top, we've got to add filter and include entities. And all the entities that we are leaving here now are the ones that are going to be in HomeKit and then are going to be available on an Apple device. So I'm going to kick out all the sensors because I have no interest in the sensors on the Apple devices. I could leave a couple of um, things in here, like a couple of temperatures, but it's not really necessary. And then um, I just clean this up real quick. And yeah, that's actually all. After that, we just have to restart the home kit integration and then we can scan the QR code uh, from an Apple device and it will add all these devices to home kit. But just a reminder, um, when you do this on HomeKit, you will have to um, confirm each device that you added here. So if you've got a lot of devices like this here, you will um, be 15 minutes like confirming devices and also put them into rooms. Uh, little tip here, if you use the rooms in uh, HomeKit and you um, use the same name that we have here, like kitchen and then the rest, then in HomeKit, the kitchen will be uh, hidden in the in the display. That's very handy. Also, with the naming scheme, I also recommend always use the room first and then what it is. This is really going to clean up your Home Assistant installation. All right, that's about it. Um, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, it certainly would have made my first um, KNX transition to Home Assistant a lot quicker if I'd known all this. Uh, yeah, sorry about the narration and uh, I don't, uh, English is not my mother tongue and also I don't have the time to like clean this up perfectly, but I still hope this is helpful. Thank you very much for watching and maybe see you another time.